All right. Okay. Uh, thanks for joining everyone today. We, today we have uh, another Eric with us uh, from Habitat ADU. Um, we'll be going through kind of the process of building an ADU in, in the Bay Area, which also pretty much applies for California too, right, Eric? That's right, yeah, with a, a set of new legislation that came into effect January 1st of 2020, so last year, it's been about a year, um, your local jurisdiction has very little influence over your ability to build an ADU anymore, it's statewide, which is very cool. All right, yeah, so we'll just do like a, maybe a short 20 to 30 minute presentation and then uh, take questions from anyone and then we'll give all the contact information for Eric as well after if you have any further needs to build an ADU. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Eric, and happy to uh, educate your audience and your client base about the capabilities and possibilities of building an ADU here in the Bay Area and throughout California. Okay. Uh, do you want to do any other intro stuff or I'll go ahead and share That's my screen? Yeah, you can share your screen. We can get right into it. All right. Let me pull everything up. Is everything looking okay? Yeah, can see it. Awesome. Well, uh, again, thanks for having me, Eric. I know we've uh, kind of chatted ADUs many times and I'm excited you're on, on board helping to educate and evangelize everyone in California about the possibilities to build an ADU, which is just an amazing thing to undertake. It can add a ton of value to your property. The cap rates and returns are tremendous. It's great for families. It's also great for the community, uh, being good for the environment, and to add much needed housing in a state that desperately needs it. Uh, so this is gonna be a, a high level sort of uh, general set of information about how to go about building an ADU, whether that's with us at Habitat or not. I support uh, every homeowner building an ADU regardless, but we will have some Habitat specific information <clears throat> at the end as well, and then plenty of time for questions. So uh, agenda, we'll cover what is an ADU, these new laws that have made it your effectively state right as a homeowner to build an ADU, no matter what your local city says. Uh, some of the typical use cases we see for ADUs, uh, as mentioned, we'll have questions at the end and a little bit of info on Habitat and what we do uh, as well. I'm Eric, I'll be uh, your co-host with uh, Eric with a C uh, today. <laughs> Some background on me. Uh, I'm originally from the Bay Area, spent a lot of time in Southern California, I actually recently just launched the Southern California market for Habitat. Uh, I lead business development at Habitat now, so partnerships and relationships with lenders, agents, property managers, local associations, things of that nature. Uh, previously, I was at a company called Open Door, where I led new product operations uh, and Habitat in general, just uh, as, as a brief introduction is a turnkey provider of ADU solutions for homeowners and multifamily investors throughout California. Uh, we build just prefab detached single story ADUs. But again, if you have a project that doesn't fit into that box, we're happy to help advise you uh, in a different direction as well. So to kick things off, uh, what is an ADU? Uh, ADU is a really broad blanket term that is defined in the legislation by the state of California. Uh, in a number of different ways. But uh, the key here is that it's broad and a lot of different types of structures can be considered an accessory dwelling unit. The key commonalities amongst those broad definitions are that it's a secondary unit that exists uh, on a, a parcel, the same parcel as another either multifamily dwelling or primary residence. Uh, so they have many names that people have probably heard, granny flats, granny homes, garden homes, carriage homes, garage units, uh, basement units, etc. cetera. Um, but the key, second unit must have a permitted livable uh, kitchen, sleeping space, entrance and egress, and sanitation space. So uh, a fully self-encapsulated unit that's permitted, livable, rentable square footage. Uh, what are some of the forms that an ADU can take? Well, the first dichotomy we like to draw is detached versus attached ADUs. So this photo that you see here is a render of one of our detached structures. So that's a separate structure in like a backyard that stands alone. But ADUs can also be attached to the primary residence. You could have 
an attached garage that's been converted to an, a separate standalone unit or a basement conversion. Those are attached structures. Uh, as mentioned, they can be conversions of existing space where maybe you change out some of the walls or do a renovation on existing space to make it permitted with uh, all those things that were mentioned, entrance and egress, uh, bedroom, bathroom, uh, kitchen space, et cetera. Uh, or they can be ground up construction from scratch, which is what we do at Habitat, uh, specifically we do HUD code manufactured home ADUs. Uh, the other thing worth talking about is that there's a separately defined, but sort of under this broader umbrella of an accessory dwelling unit, there's a junior accessory dwelling unit or JDU. These are a little bit different and uh, every single family parcel in California is now allowed by right to have one detached ADU and one junior ADU. Junior ADUs uh, have to be attached, have to be less than 500 square feet have to share a doorway into the primary residence and they can do sort of funny things like share a bathroom with a primary residence and uh, get away with permitting with only a kitchenette. They're dramatically less interesting to investors or, uh, or multifamily owners because they're not rentable uh, unless you occupy the primary residence as an owner occupant. Um, but still something that's very cool that exists. Uh, the key here with all of these things is that they're sort of an accessory to an existing primary residence. And you have a lot of options within ADUs. Uh, they can be connected and run off of the main residence's utilities, or you can meter them all separately, uh, separate addresses or the same address. A lot of optionality. Key component is that it's additional livable square footage that can be permitted and rented separately uh, on the, the existing parcel. So uh, one of the reasons this is such a hot topic right now is that there was a set of sweeping legislation that came into effect on January 1st of last year, as mentioned. So where previously every local city and county had its own unique rules, there's now consistent statewide guidelines that actually promote and incentivize the development of accessory dwelling units, right? The state has a big housing crisis, much more housing is needed to be built. Uh, so these statewide laws now come over the top of local jurisdictions. They take precedent and allow everyone, every property owner in California to build one ADU and one junior ADU per parcel. Whereas before uh, you might have to go through a very difficult 120 day plus discretionary review process where you're subject to HOAs, neighbors, design sessions, it's now a ministerial review process where if you check the boxes, it's a, a, a ministerial process, meaning they just sort of fill out the quick form, give you a stamp and you're on your way without all of the difficult design hearings and discretion of the past from, from the local cities and counties. Permit fees have been dramatically reduced, particularly impact fees uh, have been outlawed uh, under a certain square footage. Parking requirements uh, have, for the most part, been eliminated, so you can't be required to build parking in order to build an ADU. In fact, in many cases, you can destroy parking to build an ADU and not have to replace it. Um, for non-junior ADUs, just regular ADUs, uh, there's no owner occupancy requirement that's allowed to be required by local jurisdictions, meaning you're allowed to rent both the single family residence and the ADU separately. So this has really unlocked the AD space for investors for the first time, really increasing returns on properties dramatically. And setback requirements, uh, which is the distance from a rear or side property line. Uh, those have been standardized statewide to four feet. So anything within or outside of four feet uh, from your rear and side property lines is your buildable envelope. You're allowed to put an ADU there no matter what. Uh, with no subjection to things like coverage ratios or, or things of that nature. So tremendous benefit to single family property owners to be able to build an ADU almost no matter what with a ministerial quick approval process on your property. Multifamily as well. Uh, a lot of people overlook multifamily. I was just chatting with uh, someone on the Berkeley ADU task force who is a private money lender and owns many multifamily properties. And they didn't even know about the new changes uh, from a regulatory standpoint to allow for ADU development on multifamily properties. 
So any existing multifamily dwelling qualifies, doesn't actually need to be zoned multifamily, just used in that way. You're allowed to build two detached ADUs per multifamily parcel and conversion ADUs up to 25% of the existing units. So if you have a 16 unit building, you can build four conversion ADUs, say replacing a garage with an ADU and two additional detached ADUs per parcel. And really with multifamily, there's no size restrictions whatsoever, which is great. So uh, why is this hot now? It feels like everyone is talking about ADUs and get exciting about getting excited about building them. Uh, well, one thing is that obviously these new laws made it possible where I guess before it was very burdensome and difficult. Uh, there's also a pandemic going on and it's changed the way people are thinking about their living space, bringing loved ones closer to home, whether that's college students or grandparents. Uh, remote work has being, been enabled uh, for a lot of companies. So having sort of a detached office space and all of this is being empowered by historically low interest rates, making it very easy and affordable to finance your ADU project. Some of the use cases that we've seen at Habitat uh, in terms of the most common types of folks who are looking to build ADUs on their properties, uh, multi-gen households are aging in place. So trying to bring more family under sort of one property, but multiple roofs is a great way to keep family together. A lot of knock-on benefits here that are great for the community uh, to create more affordable housing, reduce commute times, uh, really beneficial for childcare and education when you can get more family together in one place. Also a killer retirement strategy. Uh, we're seeing this with aging in place where people will retire into the ADU and then rent out their primary residence, which is cool. And also housing for adult children. Investors are also getting seriously involved. The basic thesis for investors who are looking to build ADUs is that you already own land that's effectively free in very high yield areas. So I own a single family home with a large backyard in San Mateo. San Mateo is a very high rent area. I already own the backyard, so the land is effectively free. Uh, what I can do is build a detached ADU structure that will rent and cash flow, just like a single family home or a condo down the street with the same great cash flow. Uh, and I can get geographic arbitrage by building offsite in a factory for low cost of construction and free land. The math is inevitable. Uh, your cap rates will generally be off the charts. We've routinely seen cap rates for properties well north of 10. Uh, and if you're doing any sort of financing, your cash on cash returns can easily exceed 25%. Uh, so just a tremendous investment opportunity. In terms of habitat and what we do, as mentioned, we take a somewhat unique approach to the ADU space. Um, we build detached, single story, manufactured home ADUs built to HUD code. A ton of benefits to doing it that way, primarily lower cost and a lot of efficiencies in terms of both speed and the permitting process. Uh, in general, we're a turnkey provider of ADU services to both investors and homeowners meaning we handle everything from A to Z. So uh, no need to go hire an architect with us. Uh, we have design services in-house from a, a sort of a set menu and template options on both layouts and designs. Uh, we handle permitting for you so there's no headache or inconvenience going through that part of the process. Uh, we're the, the dealer of the unit itself and we also handle all of the site work and installation ourselves, which is incredibly unique uh, in the ADU space to be both the seller of the unit and the GC of record on the site work coordinated in the foundation, the install, the delivery, the utilities connections, all that. Um, so we can provide a much more predictable and controllable price guarantee than anyone else. Uh, if you remember nothing else about Habitat today, uh, it's a very fast timeline, about half the time of traditional stick built construction because you're building the unit itself and the site concurrently. So cut your time about in half. Uh, we will not lose on price period. There is no more cost-effective way to build a detached ADU and a super simple and straightforward process that's meant to be as convenient and turnkey as possible for you, the customer. Uh, we're a venture-backed company based out of San Francisco and Burbank building throughout California. Uh, and as mentioned, uh, our mission is really here for the customer and for California and for the community trying to help solve the affordable housing crisis. Um, 
I will run through just some of our floor plans and uh, pricing and process uh, for those of you out there that might be interested in building with us. Although if you have questions about building ADUs in general, we evangelize that, happy to answer more generalized questions as well. So uh, you can go to our website, habitatadu.com to take 3D interactive tours of uh, the layouts and interiors of all, all nine of our different sizes and floor plans, uh, get a feel for our units, something for every home. Here is just one of our nine floor plans. This is the 950. It's a three bed, two bath, 950 square feet. I love this for investors because you get three bedroom rents, but it's our smallest three bedroom option. So your cost to develop and construct is the lowest possible for that size. A three bed, two bath, about 946 square feet. So uh, our all-in pricing at 249,000 for a tier one super simple site for a project like this would be $263 per square foot. Uh, in the Bay Area, construction costs typically are gonna be $400, $500 per square foot easily. And for ADUs, they're often much higher because your fixed costs are spread across a smaller area. Um, so really low offsite arbitrage on construction costs, same great rents equals great cap rents. Uh, as mentioned, this is all in pricing for Habitat and we can do this because we're also the GC of record on our site work um, and everything's included. So in this $249,000 price for your detached ADU, permits and plans and project management are all included. Site prep and foundation, grading and demolition all included. Finishes and fixtures and appliances all included the utility connections, sewer, water, electrical panel upgrades, trenching, all included, delivery, um, trans lifts, cats to get the home under the foundation, all included. Um, whereas stick builders and other folks have a lot of hidden costs, change orders, uh, things that will get delayed and, and have cost overruns throughout the project. You can get started with us if you're interested in building an ADU. Uh, by going to our website, habitatadu.com. Uh, typically, the way our process works is we collect, uh, we do a, a free virtual assessment on your property, walk through on Google Maps, dimensions, talk about your utilities, what you can expect in terms of delivery and, and connections there, and what the pricing will likely be. Um, we also talk through local regulations. We then collect what's typically a $1,000 assessment fee that's fully refundable at any time for any reason. That gets you into a site visit where we come on site and then go through a design session with our interior design team to build out a fully complete and quoted formal scope and proposal for your project budget. So you know exactly what you're getting into upfront with a guaranteed price that covers both the site and the unit itself. Uh, and then if you like your proposal, you can proceed. If not, we refund you any fees paid to Habitat. This is a really common question for ADUs, timeline, how long does it take? So with typical stick built construction, you're probably looking at about 18 months because you have to do the site work and then the foundation and then the framing and then the electrical and plumbing all in series. With prefab, it's much faster. You can do the site work and the unit work offsite in a factory at the same time. We are telling people right now, it should be about seven to nine months. Uh, this permitting process in much of uh, California, particularly San Jose for, for this audience here that's in the South Bay is a bit backed up. So I might budget an additional one or two months because uh, cities like San Jose are not hitting their state mandated deadlines for uh, the permitting process, but it's still much more efficient compared to what it was four or five years ago. Uh, we also have model homes available uh, and this would be a great thing to come visit whether you're interested in building with Habitat or not, just to get a feel for how ADUs are being used in different backyards. Uh, we have one opening very soon in Santa Rosa, and then we have a model home in Oakland available to be visited as well uh, to get a feel for a real live ADU in someone's backyard and how it works. Uh, I wanted to leave about 10 minutes for questions, and it looks like I did exactly that. Uh, I also have a special uh, code here because Eric's been a good friend of Habitat and has uh, promoted it a bit to, to folks that where it makes sense in his client base. So I have a special discount code for that initial project assessment fee to unlock uh, you know, a site specific 
a review of your property, local regulations, and line-by-line -line quoted scoped pricing at habitatadu.com slash 500. Uh, you can go to that URL and the project assessment fee, which is again, fully refundable anytime for any reason, uh, is half off. But appreciate you having me and uh, happy to field any questions. Yeah, so I, I have a few questions. Um, what, um, thank you for the presentation. It was very informative. I, was, I went through it very quickly, so I hope yeah. it was digestible for people. What, uh, which cities, um, I guess South Bay cities, have you um, started houses or delivered delivered ADU so far? So I'm, I'm guessing San Jose or are there other local cities here that, or even the Peninsula or East Bay as well? Have you yeah, so we have well north of 150 active projects right now. There's a tremendous <laughs> demand for ADU. So we're building a ton of them as we speak. We are a newer company. So in terms of actual like completed, completed projects, it's more like, you know, a dozen or two dozen. Um, so the rest of them would be either under construction or going through the permitting process or finishing up the design process right now. Um, so our, actually our very first completed unit was in Oakland. That's available to be visited. Uh, that's our, one of our model homes. We have another recently completed unit in Santa Rosa that's available to be visited. I think we have something like 40 current pending permits in San Jose alone. And I know we've signed up customers in Palo Alto, San Mateo, Hillsboro, et cetera. Um, I would have to check our sort of project tracker to see how many completed we have in the area. But I think regardless, what you can expect is over the next say quarter, there's probably gonna be 15 to 30 projects that will be getting completed in that area specifically. Sure. Um, just for the for the audience, please use the Q and A if you have any um, questions. Um, some someone asked, "Is there a warranty for the for the ADU?" Great question, and one of the advantages of building uh, ADUs to HUD code, manufactured homes to HUD code, is that under federal law, there's a seven year warranty, uh, and that supersedes any other warranties, of which there are many on the project or property. So, you have you come to us or you come to our manufacturer and like everything is completely fixable uh, for seven years, which is great. Certain parts of the project are actually warranted for even longer. So the foundation, for example, has a, like I think a 10 year warranty. Uh, some of the site work is warranted uh, by, by us, the GC for, for 10 years as well. So uh, actually several overlapping warranties with a seven year, one of the most powerful warranties you'll ever see that's truly mandated by federal law on the unit itself for seven years. I, I know I asked, we talked about this before and I just wanted to check in with you about um, the city specific kind of like um, pre-approval for, for permits. Mm. Um, is, are, are you guys working on that or thinking about that since you guys have set? Yeah, um, every, so every city has yeah, their own program. process. Actually, most cities don't have a pre-approved program. Okay. Um, some do, some are in progress of developing them. One that does is San Jose, uh, yeah. which you pointed out. They have a pre-approved program. They also have a, a, a specific uh, person that they've hired called their ADU ally for that city to help facilitate ADU projects. The problem that they're having is that they're completely overrun and overwhelmed with ADU permit applications and they don't have the staff or the capacity to get through the backlog. Um, they do have a pre-approved program. It's really more for the building code. And are you like, so when you go through permitting, there are several different departments you have to clear, right? First planning, yeah. then building, then oftentimes like the fire marshal has to chime in, et cetera. Um, so their pre-approved plan program is beneficial specifically for the building department review. And we are in the process of applying for that because we think it will generally just not be a bad thing, but it's also not entirely necessary for us because we're building to HUD code. Our units don't go through local building. They're actually going through a federal building inspection and building approval process, and they're stamped at the factory. That's not true for any other type of construction. Um, so mostly what happens with our plans when the local building department looks at them, they have no jurisdiction. They just confirm there's an engineered stamp on it from HUD and from HCD and they go right through. The, uh, if you really wanna go down a rabbit hole on this, Eric, there's a nuanced point 
however, with the pre-approved plan program, which is that I think they will give you a little bit of priority bumping you to the top of the line uh, on the planning department side. I don't think they'd admit that and it's not how it's supposed to work, but it can't be a bad thing. So we're going through that process to make sure our customers have that benefit. Yeah, um, another, that was a great answer. Thank you. It's probably a little, it's good for me, probably a little detailed for some of our viewers. I, I figured, but since we're chatting, I thought, you know, people might like it. Bottom line, from Habitat's perspective, we do everything we can to help expedite all of our customers getting through permits and state mandated 60 days. It's not going to be hit by a lot of jurisdictions, but it's still going to be like 90 days, which is amazing for getting new construction permitted. Sure, which like for, for single family houses from scratch can be like a year sometimes more. I mean, you can go two years and never get permits in a place like, uh, you know, Menlo. Um, another question we had was, um, do you have any kind of ballpark for cost of separate utilities? Uh, yeah, so I don't know if in this presentation I broke out pricing that way. Well, I do want to have one slide that might be helpful. Um, yeah, so you know, here on the right column, you can see what other ADU companies do as they start with this 100, you know, whatever it is starting price for just a unit. Uh, and then they don't tell you about or undercharge you upfront for all these other costs. So uh, utilities here, I, whoever made this deck wrote 25,000. That might be right, or it might be much higher. It's very site specific. So generally when I'm looking through a proposal for one of our sites, uh, the big three are sewer, uh, water and electrical. Sewer baseline would be 10,000, but if you need much more trenching or an ejector pump, you could add another five or 10,000 to that price point as just sort of a, a round number. So about 10,000 for sewer, uh, water, I would say 5,000 could go up to 10 or 15,000 if you need a longer distance to trench or instead of connecting to the primary home, you're getting a new service from the city. Electrical is the really tough one. I would budget 10,000 in an optimistic case, but many, many homes have much bigger issues with electrical connections than that baseline price. And it's entirely up to the government sponsored monopoly that is PG&E up here. In Southern California, it might be Edison or, or um, DWP. But uh, a lot of folks will need an upgrade on their electrical panel to 200 or 400 amps. And that PG&E can charge an additional $20,000 for that custom engineering easily. So you might be looking at as high as 30 or $40,000 on electrical on the high end, $10,000 on the low end. So then it, it seems then it could be save you some headache if you just keep the utilities from the main house, right? And just connect it on potentially. That's that's usually the most affordable way to do it. Um, so again, it's very site specific. We're happy to come out to your property and you know give you a, a formal scoped and quoted proposal for this. The ideal scenario is that the local jurisdiction and the local utility allows a new drop from a nearby power pole and a brand new service straight to the ADU, which has a built-in electrical panel on it included in this price already. The second best scenario and by far the most common scenario is that you're connecting to your existing home's electrical system. You can still meter it separately, but you're running through the primary home first. And you don't need to upgrade that electrical panel because you already have 200 amps or more of capacity. A lot of folks won't have that though and they'll need to upgrade their electrical panel on the primary home before connecting, that's expensive. And then the single worst scenario is you have underground power and need to connect to a new service to the street. And then you have to charge and that's like sixty or seventy thousand dollars. That again, we're not charging that. That's literally just straight through from PG and E. Got it. Um, I, I I might be able to answer this question, but you can chime in too. Question is, how can I give land for my daughter to do an ADU? Um, I think what Eric was saying is that you don't really have to do anything about the land. It's more of just you know building the ADU and getting the permits, right? If you want to build it on your your existing land right eric uh let me let me check the question well can you repeat the question I didn't, i'm not sure how, how can i give land for my daughter to do an adu well so all adus require a primary residence right so the the first and most important goal is to acquire or evaluate existing 
homes that you already own and to assess how much backyard space there is or side yard space. Um, so you wouldn't want to go acquire vacant land to build an ADU because to, one of the definitions of an ADU is that there's an existing primary residence. Now, you are allowed to concurrently permit and develop both a primary home and an ADU. That's allowed under state law. But nobody wants to go get permitting for a primary residence. That's where you get into that 18-month discretionary design review process. So what you really want to go do is evaluate your existing home or go find a property you can buy that you can rent out the primary and then build an ADU for. Uh, one of the most important things to look for is just space in the backyard. I would recommend about 30 by 50 feet so that within the four foot state mandated setbacks, there's still enough space to put a 750 square foot unit or what have you. If we look at the dimensions on um, this unit, right, it's roughly, this is a bigger, much bigger unit, but it's about 40 by uh, 20, four. So if you add four feet for setbacks on either side of these, that kind of leaves you with the backyard space that you would need. Um, the other thing to look for on a property is less demolition is better, obviously, for your project costs. So less tree removal, less shed removal, the more affordable your project will be. Easy access through a side yard, a nice wide 12, 13, 14 foot driveway or side yard. So we don't need a crane to deliver and install. Uh, and then flat, flat is much more affordable. <laughs> Anytime you're on a slope, retaining walls, peered foundation systems, much more expensive. Those are some, some, some good tips. Yep. Um, Other questions from you or from the audience? I, I, think, that, I think that covered pretty much all, all the questions. Um, Thanks for coming on and, and giving a good educational program. Um, if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me or Eric at Habitat ADU. Yeah, and my email, I guess I didn't put my email in here. It's uh, Eric, E-R-I-K, at HabitatADU.com. Happy to field any inquiries. This site is a great place to get started. Also encourage you to give Eric with a C a call. He knows a ton about this stuff and can walk you through it and help evaluate uh, all the different options for your property as well. Okay, sorry, well, right before we go, I had one last, like this very nuanced question. Was, is, is the setback requirement in San Jose three feet actually? Or is it pretty much four or, or all around? In San Jose specifically, uh, I don't know off the top okay. of my head. That's one of the things we look at when we do the site visit and your formal proposal is we pull in the you know the hyper local regulations, yeah, and determine if um, some cities, as you mentioned, are more lenient than the state guidelines. Nobody is allowed to be less lenient than the state guidelines. You can't impose anything that makes it more difficult or doesn't support building ADUs. Um, I don't actually know off the top of my head in San Jose, but what I will say is even if San Jose says in the planning department, you're allowed three foot setbacks, what's going to happen in the building department and the fire marshal is they're going to take a look at that and say, well, that's way too close to the next property. We're going to require fire sprinklers. So that can add 10, $15,000 to your project. So we recommend, as long as there's the space, most people actually use a standard five foot setback to avoid fire sprinkler requirements. Oh, okay, that's a good, yeah, that's a good thing to know. So right now though, if you do the, the five, four or five feet, then it's not required, right, the sprinkler system? You're getting into one of the most contentious and nuanced okay. issues in ADU construction today. The state law says if the primary residence does not have fire sprinklers, they cannot be required on the ADU period. California has been going through a lot of major issues with wildfires and fires recently yeah. and will continue to. We want to generally be supportive of our city's interpretations and our local fire marshal's interpretations. So if they're saying we want five feet or we want fire sprinklers, generally we've encouraged our customers to go along with that and we're happy to facilitate the installation and, and manage that process. And what's kind of, sorry for the going down this drive, but what's kind of the, the ballpark for the sprinkler system if you have to go that route? Well, for, to add the sprinklers to the units, only about a two or $3,000 premium, which we'll show you up front in your proposal so you know exactly what you're getting going in. But what you typically need for fire sprinklers is a secondary water, water line and water main because if the primary water pressure has to be killed 
because of an earthquake or fire, they need a secondary water line to keep the sprinklers active. That adds about an additional ten thousand dollars. Got it. All right. Thank, thanks so much. If anyone has any much more detailed questions like I do, that um, Eric is definitely the the best resource for that, and I can put you in touch if you would like to talk to him more because he's a he knows a lot about it. <laughs> Yeah, and we're seeing all the nuances, you know, pragmatically come out in real time. So happy to chat through it with anyone or put you in touch with one of our CMs to come, you know, physically on site and look at your property with you. All right. Th thanks so much, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye.